Hello, today we're going to do a quick edit tutorial on how to edit a knock knock joke. So we've shot it with a single camera from three different angles and now we're going to put it into the machine to make the edit. So first I want to always like to be organized. So I'm going to go into my CM102 folder. I'm going to create a new folder and call this knock knock joke demo. So that's where it's going to live. And I actually already have the video clips in this other folder but I'm actually, I'm not going to move them. What I'm going to do is copy them because that's what you should always do. Always copy it to the new location. And here we go. I'm going to just paste it in. So they're in a new location now. Well, now while that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and open up Premiere. And here we are in Premiere. You can see my recent projects are right here. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to start by browsing the location where I want to save this. So I want to save this on my hard drive in my CM102 folder. In that new folder I just created called the knock knock joke demo. And I'm going to put it in here. And I'm going to call this knock knock joke. Okay, now you can see, hold on one second, now you can see my finder. Here's my video clips and here's my project file. And I'm actually gonna clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna create another new folder, call this video. And I just wanna move all my video clips into the video folder because I'm gonna get more media as I go along. So I wanna keep it organized. Now I'm inside Premiere Pro and it's actually based on how I had it open last. So I'll make sure I'm in the editing tab up here in the top center to go into my default setting. And I wanna come down here to my left hand corner where my project window is and bring in my media. So to do that, this is the way I'm going to do it today. I'm going to use, I'm actually just do the click and drag method. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to click on the video folder. I'm going to just drag it into here. And that is going to go ahead and drag it in. See if I click, it's importing right now. Now that's done. If I twirl this down, I can see everything. By default, yours might look like this with the folder icon. You could double click on that and open a new tab. I prefer having it in list view and now I can see them all. And I wanna make sure they are in correct order. Um, if they're ever out of order, if you just hit the name bar up here, you can always rearrange the ascending or descending order of that. Now let's go ahead, I'm gonna double click on the first one and see what we have here. That is a bad clip, we don't care about that. Let's double click on the second one. And we have the two actors that are doing our knock knock joke. So. For right now, we're going to find the beginning part of this. Now one thing this uh, example doesn't have, I don't have a shot from outside the classroom. So we really you should start with your establishing shot. I'm going to start with the internal shot here. I'm going to find where they tell the joke. Five, four, three, knock, knock. Who's that? Canoe. Canoe. Knock. So I want to start right, right on here, right before he says it. I'm going to be a little rough with my edits right now, but I want to start assembling. So first, I'm going to start here. I'm going to press the I key to mark an end point. I'm going to let it play until both actors speak. And I went ahead and hit the O for out to make an out point. And now you can see I just have that small section highlighted. And I want to create a sequence now. So down here, in this area, you see I have no sequence. There's no timeline right now. What I want to do is, one way I can do this, I can just click and drag this down here. You can also always right click from a clip and create a new sequence. If you're new to sequences and things, this sometimes is the best and safest way to do it as long as you're starting with a video clip. Don't ever start with a photo or anything like that to bring down here because it's going to mess up the settings. When you do this, it's going to copy the settings, so my 2997 frame rate and the dimensions are going to be copied when I bring this down. So I'm just going to click and drag this down here, and now I've created a new sequence. It's by default named the same thing as the video was, and it's also created a new sequence. It might be inside your video bin, it might be outside. But here it is. I want to go ahead right away and rename that. Oops. Like so. And I get that outside of my video bin. I don't want it to be in there. In fact, if I was working on many sequences, I would have another bin just called sequences as well. And we can see here it is. That's it, the one sequence is there. 
going to press the down arrow to get to the end of there. Now you can see I'm pretty zoomed out right now. To zoom in, I'm going to use the plus button on the keyboard to zoom in. I can also, down here on my slider, I can grab the ends here to zoom in and out. But I want to get kind of close in because we're not going to be, it's not going to be terribly long. So let's now go to another angle. I want this angle over here. I want I want to get him saying the first thing and then cut to my second actor saying the second part. So Alright, I'm gonna go backwards a little bit. I can use my arrow keys to go back and forth. One frame at a time. And then hit my in point. Let it play. pretty quick cut. Now to push it down, instead of clicking and dragging this time, I'm actually going to use a shortcut. I'm going to use the period key on the keyboard, which refers to the overwrite, or I can also use the comma as an insert, and just going to place it wherever the playhead is on the timeline. Now be careful with this. If my playhead was over something, it would either cut it in half or overwrite what's already there. But once at the end, it's pretty harmless. I can just push it down and now it's on my timeline. And now I'm going to go to the reverse clip. Oops. There we go. Do that one. I'm going to go back to the first angle for the last part now. Go back a little bit. Give it a little breath. Don't don't have to be right on top of each other. And that's the end of that. Now, this is my rough cut. Let's see how it looks real quick. Now, I heard a little gap right here. I'm going to zoom in right on this. Between this edit right here, I heard a little sound. So when I came to the next clip, I could still hear a little bit of the other actor. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get rid of this little part. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go right to here. I'm going to use a rolling edit. And what that does, by using a rolling edit, which is this tool right here, or I mean, I'm sorry, ripple edit tool. When I bring it between the two clips, I want to make sure it's facing the clip I want to make smaller. Now I'm putting the playhead to where I want to edit, because that will help me snap to that spot. I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to bring it this way. And by using the ripple edit, it readjusts everything so I don't have a gap or anything. Can you there's still a little bit there, so I'm just going to snitch it up a little bit more. I can even make this a little shorter, give him a lot of space there. So there. Oh, by the way, to get back to where I can see everything real quick there, if you hit the backspace key, the one over the return key, it always zoom all the way out, and when you hit it again, it zooms back into where you were. So it's a nice way if I'm, you know, I'm super zoomed in here and I want to see everything, I hit that key and I can see the entire timeline again. But here we go. Let's watch the joke all together. Let's well, let's take a little bit off the beginning here. Now there's one thing here. Except for that one little audio part, you can see the audio, to me, it's just just barely touching negative 12 here on the scale. It's a little low. So I'm going to show you a little trick here. First, I'm going to go back to my selection tool. I can either click on that or use the shortcut V on the keyboard. I'm going to come into my timeline. I'm going to do a Command A to select everything. I'm going to right click on the audio track and go to where it says Audio Gain. Remember, I said it was going to negative. 12 area. I want it to go up a little bit, so I'm going to adjust the gain by 6 dB. That's going to make everything 6 dB louder. And now let's watch the scale. That looks a lot better. I mean, it still peaked a little bit when I hit that loud knee slap, but that's okay. 
So that's part of the assignment. Now we need to add a little bit to this because that's that's my cuts. I got I, I cut it from three different angles. I used the same camera to do everything, so I, I had multiple takes and everything. But what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and add a title, add some music, add some credits. So to do that, first I'm going to add a title. I want to add a little blank space here to, for my title. So I don't want to start in with him talking. So maybe I want to add a couple seconds for a title. You can see here's my timeline on top. It shows me how long everything is. If I want to move all this over so that way I can see it. Now I can do a command A in here. There's also this little button right here, the track select forward tool. If I have that on, when I click on here, it's gonna, from wherever the mouse is, you'll see it clicks everything beyond that point. So if I want to select everything real quick, say there's way stuff down an hour from here that I can't see. If I do this, I know everything is selected. If I only want to select one track, I can hold down the shift modifier key and it's only going to select whatever track I'm on. But I only have one track right now anyways. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this over to like five seconds. In fact, I should put my playhead on five seconds so I know it snaps right to that grid. And now what I can do is I can now add a title. I want to add a title to this area that says, you know, knock knock joke. You know, let's, let's keep it simple for now. So to add a title, I'm going to use um, some prefab titles that are already within the program. So up on the top here, I go to Graphics tab. And on the right here, you can see there's a lot of actual preset stuff. And if I hit type in the search bar title and hit enter, it's going to show me just titles. And if you bring your mouse over left to right, it'll show you a little preview of what that title looks like. You know, let's, let's just use this one. I'm just going to click and drag this. Now I'm going to put this on a different video track. I don't want it on the same track as my video clip. I like to keep titles separate. So now once I have it in here, I'm going to bring my mouse to the middle of it so I can see the title fully formed. And to change what it says, I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to double click. You can see it's highlighted now. And I'm just going to type in knock knock joke whatever it is you need to type in there. And now your tools are up here, so I'm gonna click off of it and go back to my selection tool. This is the one time you don't wanna use your keyboard shortcuts because it would just type the letter V. But now here we have, look. Let's go all the way to the beginning. Knock, knock, joke. All right, it's got a little transition built into it. Knock, knock, who's that? Knock, knock. So that's pretty cool. But now we also maybe want some music to go underneath this. So I want some music at the beginning. I want some music at the end, not during the conversation, just before and after. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my internet browser and go to this website called freemusicarchive.org, which we've talked about in class before. I'm going to hit the search FMA button here. And let's see, I, I need something that's kind of short. So I'm going to actually just do this maybe and see what I can get for a search and I feel like it's something sitcom if that's a search term I can search for exists no no results came up for that so if I go to genres let's uh let's, let's do country I don't know why let's do country you can preview stuff sure that sounds great to me you know, take your time, go through this. Music really sets the tone for something. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the download button here. Now in Chrome, it opens up this another browser for whatever reason nowadays. So to download it, I actually have to now hit the three dot lines here and hit download. And now make sure you end up saving this in that same folder. Don't have this just sitting in the downloads folder. I'm even gonna create a new folder here called music and put it in here. Uh, the reason you don't want it just staying in your downloads folder is because when you bring it into Premiere, everything in here in your project file is just referencing wherever it's saved to. So if you put so drag something in here and it's still sitting on your desktop or your downloads folder, it's just looking for there. And then if you unplug your hard drive, put it in another computer, when you open up that project, it's still going to look for that desktop or that downloads folder and it'll say it's not there because it can't find it. It's not actually moving anything when you bring it in here, it's just referencing to where it's original location. 
So now I have my music file, and again, I can double click on this to see it up here. It's way longer than I need, I know that. I'm gonna bring it into Audio Track 2. And you can see, there we go. Now I'm actually gonna go back to my editing menu here. I like a little bit better timeline on the editing side. Now, once they start talking, I don't want audio now. So I need to do a fade here. Now there is a fade feature, but I can't see it right now. Uh, what I want to do, a couple ways I could do this. One, I can, first of all, make this track a little taller. I'm going to bring my mouse to between the tracks here, and I'm just going to click and drag this down and make this track taller. Now you see this white line that goes through it. This is the volume for that track. If I want to make a fade manually, I can come in here and holding the command key, click on a spot, make a keyframe, make another one, I can click and drag those, and that creates a fade. So that's one way of doing it. And that would cut off the end, whatever. Now, I'm gonna undo that, because what I'm gonna do here is I'm just simply make a cut and then put a crossfade on this. So to get my razor tool, it's either here, or I just hit the C shortcut, you know, C for cut. I can bring it in, you know, somewhere in here and just make a cut through the audio track. And if I click here, it's only gonna cut the audio track. It won't cut through the video as well. If I did need to cut everything, if I hold down the shift key, it would modify it so I can cut through all tracks. But right now I'm just gonna click the one there. Now I've split that in two parts. Go back to my selection tool with the V shortcut. I'm gonna click on the part I don't need and press delete, get rid of that. And then I'm gonna click on the end of the audio. And just to put a simple fade on it, I'm gonna hit shift D on the keyboard and that creates a crossfade. And now you can ex change the length of this by dragging out the crossfade like this. If I want to extend further under the clip, I can drag the end of the clip out as well. So I can make a longer crossfade. I always like to make the track end while people are talking without you realizing it. And then now that we're done, we want to come back. Maybe I want to bring audio back in. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to select the out, the end part of this and, and bring that down. Oops. Undo that. Sorry. Now, if I want to use these features to insert or overwrite onto the tracks here, you always have to make sure you're on the right track. By default, it's gonna to go to audio one. I want it to go to audio two, so I'm gonna select this as where it's gonna insert it, and now it inserts it down there. And that's way more than I need, so let's shorten that up. Make it start from under there, add a little, oops. I just wanna crossfade on the end. See, before I had the whole thing selected, so I put a crossfade on the front and back. <laughs> Maybe I'm just gonna do something simple for a title here. I'm gonna go back to my graphics. I'm actually gonna use the same title I used before. Now here I'd also want you to put you know your actors' names in there, give credit for them. Um, I'm just doing something simple for this one. have it. Now I look at the whole thing. Always make sure you watch the whole thing again afterwards. Knock, knock. Who's that? Canoe. Canoe who? Canoe help me with my homework. <laughs> okay. And that's it. That's how it that looks pretty good. I'm going to go back to my editing tab here. Oh, my sound looked good, my graphics look good. Now we need to save this. Always, you know, this does auto save every couple minutes, but it's always good to do a command S and just save it before you export it. So now to get this out of here and onto YouTube, we're gonna go up to file. Oh, first I want to make sure that I have either 
the sequence selected here or in my projects folder because whatever is highlighted is what you're going to export so if you have a video highlighted when you export you're just going to export that video clip and not your actual project I'm go up there go file export media or command m and then under here there's a format by default it's going to be on quicktime i change it to h.264 and then you can either do what I usually do is just match source and stay at high bitrate or you can always if you know if you know you're going to YouTube you there are YouTube presets right here YouTube 1080 full HD that's always an option as well and then come over under your output name click on the name itself and this is going to let you choose where that video goes to so I'm going to choose the folder and you know it's a habit of mine sometimes I will create inside that folder just an exports folder so that way if I'm doing a lot of projects within one project file itself I can have all my exports maybe I'm doing multiple versions but at least I know where all my final videos are the rest of this I'm just gonna leave this the same I'm not gonna touch any of this stuff and then I can just hit the export button down here And there we are, it is exported. So let's go ahead and we're just gonna minimize this for right now. And I wanna get it to YouTube now. So here's my exported video. Let's go ahead and go to YouTube. If you don't have a YouTube account, create one, they are free. I'm gonna go to my account I wanna use. And hit the plus button up here to upload a video. And you can either drag in or navigate to it. I'm going to do the drag in method this time. Here it is. Knock, knock, joke. Title is required, so give it a nice title. You can name whatever you want. Uh, give it a description. Add it to a playlist. I'm actually going to call, um, call the CM102. Right here under age restriction, say no, it's not made for kids. Hit your next button. Don't need to worry about that slide. Make sure it's on public so that way when you put it on your website, people can see it. And hit publish. And now to get this onto your website, go ahead and hit the copy video link button here. Open up your Weebly. Edit your site. This will go under a videos page for you. I'm going to put this with my knock knock joke video. So I'm going here where it says knock knock joke. And well, look at that. I already have one version of this. I'm going to put another version up there as well. So to put it up here, I just come over here where you see I have uh, YouTube on this left side here. Just drag it over to where you want to put it on your page click on it and then paste in your YouTube link there and when you click off of there it's going to show up and that's it and that is how you get there make sure you hit the publish button and then you are complete and that is how you edit your knock knock joke